Sure. Right. Stay. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God, and in his soul, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Benny David. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wilty. Here. Brenda Simmons. Here. Craig Scott. Any uh, any additions or corrections to the agenda? Okay. Item three, public comment. Is there any public comment in the room on agenda items only? Any public comment on the phone? Item four, fiscal year 2024 budget draft. Okay, in front of you, you should have three documents. Uh, one of them is a revised general fund draft for 24. The second one is a revised special fund draft for 24. I'm going to work off from the shorter or the thinner document, the one that's the draft for your 2024 budget index of adjustments. And what I'll do is walk through the changes that were made from your previous drafts, so you can track those. Each one of these changes that you'll see in this index has the line item number identified. And you'll be able to get into the larger document and you'll see highlighted in yellow that same line. You can actually find it in the larger document if you want to take that deep of a dive into it. So you can see exactly how the uh, different uh, uh, additions and subtractions are working. This proposal uh, has a very thin surplus of $30,312 to it. It does track with what we've discussed in the past about reducing our staffing at the jail and making some movements with some of our law enforcement from the general fund to the road patrol millage fund. But there have been a few other things that have happened since we last met that I will highlight as we walk through this. We'll start right at the top of the index. The very first thing that you see is an increase of $15,000 in Friend of the Court Central Services. This is a result of our cost allocation plan that we do each year. And this is kind of like a mini audit that goes through our organization and finds out whose time is being spent where. And in the case of uh, Friend of the Court, some of these, some of this time is reimbursable. Uh, in this case, uh, with the different uh, departments that are involved in some of the Friend of the Court Central Services category, justified the increase of 15,000 in revenue. So that change is incorporated. Next one, the administration, uh, as you know, uh, Kelly has submitted her uh, resignation effective at the end of the month. Uh, that uh, next following week starts the fiscal year. This proposal does not uh, include uh, uh, filling that position. So that uh, will all be a uh, subtraction of expense. Uh, under County General, looking at where we are right now on our postage, and this remember last year, we consolidated a lot of the individual lines into the single line. It worked out quite well to be able to track where our postage is, but looking at what was originally budgeted and where our trends are right now, a uh, reduction of 7,500 to that line. In the treasurer's office, there is some movement. We had a resignation there as well, so a new hire coming in would be coming in at a lower rate. This also includes a reclassification of the part-time person to an L3 as is allowed in the steelworker agreement. The total net is a savings of about $4,700 over what we originally had proposed. An equalization is just uh, a line item uh, being renamed uh, local unit contribution for clerical. It was titled something else that was not clear at all in the past. Uh, under elections, uh, very small, uh, of workers' comp and social security. Uh, building and grounds, there is a line item there for carpet replacement. Uh, I believe it's something like $10,000 this last year. I'm not sure we've even spent a thousand out of that, uh, but that was a candidate for reduction. In probate court, a reduction of 12,000 to uh, uh, reflect uh, decreased expenditure for discontinued JIS fee. That's uh, some software that uh, was used in that department, but that will no longer be uh, charged in 24. I mentioned at the last couple of meetings about moving the software purchase for the prosecuting attorney, this one-time purchase for the new uh, 
you know, name escapes me. That's Kefalar, but I know that's not right. But anyway, $75,000 reduction there. Now, one of the first large ones in the sheriff's office, these reductions are all related to moving the one lieutenant position over to the Road Patrol Millage Fund. And I did want to point one item out. Um, when we get to the, the jail and the corrections agreement, um, the secretary for the sheriff's office is actually in the corrections unit and is a relatively new hire. It would normally have to then be because of the way the seniority works uh, for layoffs, would normally have to um, be one of the persons that was let go simply for lack of seniority. But the contract for corrections, uh, where it talks about the order of layoffs, the very next sentence is, this section is not applicable to cooks and secretarial classifications. So that fortunately saved the secretary from just a, a kind of a outsider looking in uh, layoff. Uh, she doesn't obviously work at corrections and isn't directly related. And uh, the sheriff, uh, frankly, needs a secretary. So... We're, we're able to do that with the contract language that's written. So everything that you see here, as far as uh, when these dollars being moved out of the sheriff's office, it's not actually losing anybody, but it's moving one position over to the road patrol millage. Mm -hmm. The next two are our school resource deputies. We are moving 25% of their expense to the road patrol millage. This reflects really the summer uh, when they're not in school. Uh, and they are actually working with the sheriff's office. So it's just uh, really an accounting thing as far as the work going on on the ground, you really wouldn't notice it, but it's just the accounting for the positions themselves. You have uh, totals for each one of them. Pardon me? You have totals for each one of those? Uh, if you want to add those you up. You want me to? Okay. Do that. All right. It's in the $20,000 range for each one of them. Uh, the next item is in the tether program, uh, talking to the under sheriff. They are restarting the work release program with tether, and his estimate is that that would bring in eight thousand dollars of additional revenue. So that's included. The next one, the three fifteen activity, the secondary road patrol. This is the grant that we receive from the state each year. Now this year, um, twenty four, we're anticipating sixty four thousand seven hundred fifty four dollars. This entire activity would be moved over to the road patrol millage so that uh, grant dollars would come out of the general fund and would apply to the road patrol millage but so would the expenses uh, and you'll see that uh, when we get down that part that you'll be able to pinpoint exactly what is uh, secondary road grant uh, related uh, with that 315 number tied to each one of those lines on the marine snowmobile and orv um, big concern here was with uh, any kind of a layoff that might happen. Uh, first place that we are uh, required to go in terms of our collective bargaining agreements is our part-time employees. But there's a little bit of a nuance. Contracts talk about regular part-time employees. And in the case of these uh, officers, they would be called temporary or seasonal employees. So they are exempt from any kind of uh, layoff uh, order. So uh, the language actually says that temporary and seasonal employees are not subject to the terms of the collective bargaining agreement. So what that means is when it comes to these, these uh, particular activities, particularly marine snowmobile and ORV, um, in the updated um, position allocation list, we've actually broken out so you can see how many there are, but because they're temporary seasonal in classification, they aren't in, in order for any kind of a layoff. So the sheriff will still have that uh, group of employees available. This does unfortunately capture the regular part-time employee, uh, but at least for the seasonal type uh, activity, uh, uh, staffing level that the sheriff has now can be maintained. I did want to point out in the snowmobile patrol grant uh, from Dow, uh, that money actually came in and was deposited with the treasurer already. So that's going to be recorded in fiscal year 23 and not 24. So that revenue has been moved out. The challenge, I think, now for the sheriff's office is to get those monies committed before the end of the current fiscal year so we don't have any bleed over. Now, if it did happen, we'd figure something out uh, to account for it. Uh, that grant, uh, you might recall from the resolution that was approved, uh, was not supposed to be here until December. And so that's why it was originally programmed for 24, but it showed up early. It's been 
deposited. And so, you know, we'll just have some other, you know, hoops to jump through to make sure we account for that correctly. Now with corrections, the very first thing that you see is that uh, million dollar reduction uh, in revenue. This is a reflection of the Gladwin County decision and also uh, the, the additional 50,000, we had budgeted uh, originally 300,000 to come in from uh, Oscoda County inmates. Uh, that's trending more closely to 250. I'm more comfortable programming that at 250 than 300. If it does come in higher, that's great, but 250 is a comfortable number, at least from this vantage point. The next several lines are dealing with the reduction in force. And in this case, um, it, to balance this budget, uh, this, this means five correction officers uh, that are uh, scheduled for the reduction. Uh, you did receive an email from me on Friday, just a few things that I wanted to go over with you as far as how this will likely work. Uh, our initial or the uh, analysis, the staffing analysis that we're working off from now that was uh, actually done in 2019 and reported out in 2021 was based on an average daily population of 94 inmates. This last year, we were at 72. The year before, we were slightly under. Uh, one of those years during COVID, we were in the 60s. We're not coming to even 94 or even the 144 that we're rated for right now. So the philosophy being uh, that if we are not housing that many inmates, we should not necessarily staff for that many inmates. If we're not having that many come in, we should probably reduce our staff then to more accurately reflect the number of inmates coming in. Now, there's, that's a very simple calculation. There's a lot more to it than that as far as the analysis and the staffing levels go. For instance, we need to uh, get into the inmate classifications and what types of inmates we handle and how we handle them and so on. So there's, there's a lot more that goes into it. When we talked to the Department of Corrections last Friday, uh, the uh, DOC representative's uh, response to the philosophy here was, and I'm quoting, I don't know that you're wrong. But his hesitance was he's not had to do an analysis to reduce numbers in the past. He's always done them to increase numbers. So he's kind of hedging his bets a little bit because he doesn't quite know exactly what this is going to entail. But he did recommend, and I suggest pretty strongly, that uh, we submitted a letter to DOC to do an updated analysis based on this philosophy of capping our total number of inmates coming in. Um, that would require a letter signed by the board chair and the sheriff, uh, but we would also have to get in line behind two other counties. It's looking like probably after January 1 before they can get in here and actually do the analysis. Uh, in the meantime, obviously, they know what we're um, contemplating right now that could uh, uh, constitute an unscheduled visit, an unscheduled analysis, which I say, bring it on. We need this done as soon as we can uh, so that we know if we're going to be able to uh, operate within what the Department of Corrections expects. Uh, there are specific rules they have to follow as well. There's a statute that uh, calls for only one uh, corrections officer per level. Uh, that obviously is not practical in our case, but uh, that's their minimum uh, to start with. So uh, what they would do with that analysis is uh, take into account the layout of the facility and the classification system we have and a number of other operational concerns. Uh, but in the meantime, we have to balance the budget before the end of the month. So uh, that's the proposal right now is the reduction of five uh, staff members there. A uh, couple of other items uh, that's in here. Um, the uh, medical expense, when we signed the agreement to do the uh, medical care for the inmates, the medical contract, we actually uh, added 20 hours of nursing time uh, onto that contract. This proposal would reduce that uh, and actually just take that option out, continue the medical contract, but just not uh, uh, any longer uh, go along with the uh, additional hours of the nursing staff. And I appreciate that that's something that's uh, I think has worked out quite well. Uh, but when we're looking at the budget situation that we are right now, it's um, it just seems to make sense. The uh, one that uh, talks about the out county inmate medical expense that should be removed, so that uh, uh, twenty five should should come out of there. What I originally did was went through. Uh, 
Hmm. Numbers gonna come up. That's right after that. 351, 835, 700 right. out of county inmate medical oh, okay. uh, That expense likely will still be there, but one of the scenarios I plugged in was what if we removed the Oscoda County contract and just didn't accept any other inmates and only dealt with our own. Uh, but the bottom line is the revenue that it brings in uh, right now really does have an impact on our ability to operate the facility in a, what I would call a fiscally responsible manner. Cutting it out, yes, it was out some of the expenses, but that revenue uh, that was brought brings in uh, between 250 and 280,000 a year. Uh, at this point, um, there really isn't any reason to discontinue that unless we're going to simply go to a lockup, and I'll talk about that in a second. Then, mm -hmm. then on top of that, commissary funds for those. Right, yeah. And I'm going to get into that here in a second with the other scenario. Uh, so that's very true. If we uh, didn't have those, I believe we're uh, uh, committed on the contract a minimum of 18 bats. If we lose those, we lose the commissary that comes with it as well. Next one is a small increase in revenue from animal control. Uh, this is uh, the board and care of dogs. This is a uh, fee that we pay to uh, uh, the Ray shelter to bring dogs in, but in many cases, animal control is able to identify the owner of the dog. And when that's the case, they're able to bill the dog's owner uh, for the expenses that we would otherwise pay out. And they're estimating at about $8,500 of revenue that that would generate. And the appropriations, uh, there was a slight upward adjustment, uh, really uh, inflationary adjustment to our commitment to the state grant of $2,607. And so that's plugged in. But some of the larger ones, the contingency line uh, is reduced by $50,000. There's still $25,000 in there for unforeseen activities that uh, may come up. Uh, but that's a, a reduction anyway that uh, was necessary to balance this budget. The amount that was originally programmed in for the jail bond debt was a little high, so that's been reduced. We did double check that with uh, uh, interest in the principal payments that are due in the coming year. We are pretty solid on that number. The child care fund uh, actually needed an additional $50,000 increase just to uh, reflect the trends that they're experiencing in that fund. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. The next two, the BSNA software. Uh, line and then the network hardware and software line, those are pretty substantial reductions, but based on the trends that we're seeing in both cases, um, one of the things that's skewing the trend is a couple of years ago, we actually purchased the BSNA software. So that uh, really inflated the line for that year. So the averaging is skewed a little bit. And with the um, uh, network hardware and software, again, it's uh, getting down to uh, you know, things that we actually buy, the hardware that we buy, any software upgrades, uh, looking at those trends that we're, I'm pretty comfortable in that number being reduced. On the road patrol millage fund, uh, we pretty much covered everything that's in here. It does include uh, moving a lieutenant over to this fund. Uh, to accommodate that, though, unfortunately, we lose three of our lower seniority uh, deputies in the process. The um, second half of that grouping, you'll see all the 259, 315s, and that's that the road patrol uh, state grant that we received and the expenses that go with that, that being programmed in. Um, what do you mean by lower decreasing three lower seniority deputies? What does that mean so exactly? To make this this work, uh, moving the lieutenant over and moving the uh, road patrol grant uh, position over to the road patrol millage fund. Uh, there, um, unfortunately, that displaces three deputies that we currently have on the roster uh, to make room for that, and that's. Uh, you know, the actual number of people, particularly in the summertime, uh, is actually the same. Uh, and you can see that the actual reduction in the in, in the pay is uh, only about 48000 But bringing over the lieutenant is a fairly high dollar item. And the grant from the road patrol uh, from the state only covers about half of the expense uh, for that officer. So the officers are here, uh, but unfortunately, there are three... Uh, Again, just uh, going by the contract itself, we have to uh, uh, go from the uh, last hired uh, 
and work our way up. So that's that's three that we've recently hired that would end up having to be laid off to accommodate that move. Just so I understand correctly, it's because when we move the lieutenant position over to the road patrol millage, there's no funds to support the three lower the three other deputies, correct? Right. The next item is the correction officer training fund. Um, this budget proposes moving the training line out of the 351, out of the corrections, uh, general fund activity, and using the corrections officer training fund uh, for all the training. And there is a fund balance in there that uh, helps cover those costs. What's the fund balance? You know, it is in the handout. Oh, okay. Uh, something I had, I couldn't tell you, but there's a gray bar at the bottom of each of the special funds that'll tell you what that fund balance is. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, the next item is the indigent defense fund. Again, we've already funded up that. There's a substantial increase in the revenue from the state uh, this coming year of $230,000. Uh, and then uh, the transfer I already mentioned for the county are uh, Support for that is uh, uh, the American Rescue Plan. Uh, this again is the attorney prosecuting attorney software being moved over to the ARPA fund. Child care fund that mentioned earlier about an increase in the county allocation, and you can see the increase in the expenditure, and that's the state board charge back line. And this again is the, the best estimate of what their uh, child care fund will need to accommodate that in the coming year. The next one is the jail bond payment fund, which I've already mentioned, the adjustment in the principal and the interest um, that ends up in <laughs> savings of uh, $17,700. And then finally, the transit fund. Uh, the original uh, draft that you saw did not include the millage revenue uh, that's now in there. Uh, and you can see that again that the transit fund is uh, pretty well balanced on its own uh, with the fund balance it has. Well, that's the tour. Um, I did want to just for a second talk about the option that was discussed at our last meeting about what would happen if we just, instead of doing a full fledged jail, just did a lockup and moved our inmates to other counties. Well, in the process of working the details, there's a lot of uh, you know, you make an adjustment on one line, it impacts two or three other lines later on. So, going through all of that, but the uh, initial review, and this is again just, uh, you know, back of the napkin type math at this point uh, i have no idea really what it means as far as staffing to do a lockup versus a full-fledged jail but taking a best estimate at that uh you know it's potential to save another 1.1 million in staffing costs but then we're going to also have to increase our housing expense if we just did 50 inmates a day at 35 dollars a day that's a 650 thousand dollar expense that we don't have now that has to be added back in we would then obviously lose our uh, uh, revenue from Oscoda County, so about another 250,000. And then the loss of commissary, probably 220, $250,000 range. So right now it actually works out because of those losses to be a little bit more expensive to go to the lockup route. But this is before it, it, any professional eye has looked at in terms of the staffing level that's needed for a lockup. Uh, I'm sure I'm, I've estimated that um, uh, you know, we estimated keeping more staff than maybe would be needed for a lockup, but I don't know that that's not my uh, area of expertise by any stretch. But other expenses that I know that we would have uh, would include our transport on call uh, employees, the fuel that would uh, be needed to transport inmates back and forth from uh, another facility, and probably vehicle maintenance would go up as well. Um, so those are still uh, items that I'm working on. I, I don't suggest that we uh, let's go that route like right now. That's just this this budget will take us down to uh, you know the staffing level that I believe is consistent with our inmate population. It also phases it in over 30 days. Uh, so you'll have there are some expenses obviously with that, but the phase in I think rather than just saying on October 1, that's what we're doing, that's just not gonna work. Um, this will give everybody time to take a breath, really look at this, make adjustments accordingly, put the plan in place and move forward. But we should continue to look at this. Um, when we have DOC up here, we can really talk to them at length about what does it mean to do a lockup and really get down to the, the fine tooth or the you know, sharpen pencil uh, arithmetic to find out that that's really something that we should consider or not. 
one expense I know we're going to have no matter what will be that bond payment. And that will continue through 2035, I believe it is. So, you know, that's just one, it's just a factor that's there. That's where things stand right now. Um, as I said, each one of these line item adjustments you can see is highlighted in the larger documents too. So if you need to go back and see just exactly how that worked, you can hopefully connect the dots. Uh, and then if there are any questions that you have. With with these um, individuals that we're talking about laying off, uh, was it figured in this budget that we're gonna have to pay their unemployment? It is, and luckily that's where that surplus ends up going. Um, I am uh, pretty confident that these uh, employees are very employable, so hopefully it'll be a short stay on unemployment as well, but yes. Um, Where's that line item? The surplus? Yeah. You go down to the, on the general fund budget, on the very bottom. Is it in this version here? No, it's on the general, that document right there. Okay. It's right on the bottom of that front page, you see the surplus. 30,000? Yeah. 30, it's going to cost us for how many individuals to lay off? Do you have figured out? Uh, let's, I do eight. For how many months is that? 20. 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. 20 weeks, correct? 20 weeks, right? That's right. I think that's right, too. I understand that's the max, 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. Because we dropped that unemployment, correct, is, is what I did a little research. Unfortunately, I didn't receive any information that I requested, but I did a little research and we dropped that unemployment that we were paying $162 per employee per year. Per year? That we were paying and we decided to uh, stop paying that. And that's why we have to pay this if, if we unemploy, if we lay anybody off. Is this correct? Right. Yes. Can you can you recap that? Because I don't recall that. Well, the discussion happened uh, quite a while ago, and it's over a year ago. Uh, we were involved in a dispute with the unemployment insurance agency over some of our volunteers. They classified as employees, and uh, they wanted to collect additional fees from us to cover them as employees. As we're going through that process, and you may recall a conversation with our county attorney on this. Um, we learned that we were one of only two counties in the state that was paying into unemployment uh, rather than doing it on a, I forget what the terminology is, but rather than doing it on a uh, as needed basis, I guess, for lack of another word. Self-funding so, kind of thing. Right. So we um, talked about that and the change was made, gosh, I want to say maybe a year ago. Uh, this is the first year that it actually was in place, uh, and that that's what led up to it. So, well, you looked at the track record. I remember the conversation. We looked at our track record of how many did we lay off in the last few years, and there just wasn't any. It was. It was a conversation in committee of the whole. But I is that something that we typically would 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 vote on? Because I don't recall a resolution, and I looked and I didn't see one. Yeah, I'm not sure we did a resolution on that. Okay. My next question is decreasing the staffing. It, what's the how does that inc increase our liability, or what yeah, does it do for yeah. our liability? Yeah, it's um, you know, potentially uh, would increase our exposure, uh, but that's uh, you know that's the first thing that DOC said. You know, you reduce your numbers, you increase your exposure. Well, yeah, there's risk in doing all this, and jail business is quite risky. So has anybody reached out to our uh, our uh, insurance? They have not yet. To find out if this is something that we can even do, if, if yeah. they're going to allow this? Or... Well, they'll, they'll allow it. The only thing they might do is say, well, this is a higher risk. We have to increase your rates. Or they could possibly drop us. They could, they, that's always a possibility. I don't think that's likely, but that's it's possible. So, So basically, if we... Do a reduction of five corrections officers. We're just rolling the dice for compliance because we we really just don't know until they do the analysis. Right. It's a big roll of dice, Tim. It is. Okay, so we don't do anything with the jail at all. This is conversation. What are we going to do? It is. Hey, I, I still have some more questions before we get to that, but go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. Um, I, I did a little bit of questions, some things that we have made some decisions on in the past 
years or year and a half anyways, it was supposed to save us um, some money. And, and I'm shocked by some of these numbers and I'm shocked that nobody, I guess, had brought awareness to these numbers. Um, when was our legal fees? Uh, I look back to 2020, 2021, our legal fees was, which I'm sure that there's more to this story. I, I didn't do any research on this. This number was $10,292. 2021 to 2022 was $54,561. And 2022 to current with another round is $42,031. And that's not including the lawsuits costs that his, his also went up pretty significantly. 2020 to 2021, 52,000. 2021 to 2022, 59,000. 2022 to current, 67,000. And we switched legal teams. You know, it, we were we were thinking that it was going to save us some money. Some other areas that we were thinking was going to save us some money was on the medical contract. Um, 2020 to 2021 was 160,000. 2021 to 2022, 159,000. With another round yet to go, it's looking like 174,000. 2022, 2023. Um, I estimated uh, it's going to be about $179,952. That went from 160, 2020, 2021 to 179 with uh, with the thoughts that we were actually going to save some money there. The other thing is, is, is we did some uh, uh, food and I know food costs have, have went up. This is just some, some thoughts that crossed my mind and I did some requests for some numbers, food for the jail. Because we we uh, cooks we we made into corrections officers, or so they had a dual role there. But twenty twenty one was ninety five thousand eight hundred ninety two thousand eight hundred ninety two dollars. Twenty twenty two was one hundred twenty one thousand eight hundred eight dollars. In twenty twenty three, with another round going yet to come, one hundred thirty six thousand seven hundred ninety one dollars. These are just some areas that I know we had passed some resolutions on, had did some discussion on where we were gonna save money. And uh, we obviously have not. Well, how are we gonna save on the food? Um, well, the food, we we went to Cook's. Uh, there's less inmates. We, this, food this, again, to? food costs went up a lot. I, I don't know. These are just some questions that, that haven't popped up. Um, that's a pretty big jump from 95,000 to 136,000 with another round yet of of costs. Can I add on that? Yeah, please. Just because I have experience with it and I own a bar and restaurant, uh, you know, basically over the last three to four years, we've seen an, an increase, you know, up to 25% in some of our food costs. Now, I'm not saying that I don't know who's really working on our food costs. I don't know how many vendors we're using. You know, sometimes if you go all in with the vendor you can save substantial money and i think that's something that we could look into maybe try to save but you know on average um pretty much 20 percent increase over the last few years just for the cost of food right these are less numbers again these are just some things that we had talked about that kind of ring ring in my mind doing some uh thinking on some things that we were hoping that would would save us money that obviously uh is not I did have a conversation with the undersheriff about the meals, and there were substantially more meals, I guess, that they've done in the past year over the prior year as well. So compounding the inflation issue, more meals being prepared. Because? That's... I think our population, I did look at that. I think our population more meals through that time period. Yeah. But he did bring that. He did have all that. Any other thoughts, ideas? Um, you know, with this new, this is also agreeing to move the money over from the ARPA funds too, which I don't think we've agreed on the $75,000 from the attorney for the attorney software. But any any other comments, questions? No, we haven't agreed on that. That's just a proposal. I agreed. Us, that's all. Commissioner Simmons. Anything? I mean, this was just put in front of us. Uh, this, this, I, I, this wasn't on the iPads, correct? It's been uh, on since yesterday, and it's been radically updated all day as we go through yeah. various things. So I haven't had a chance to to look at this. I worked all day. When yesterday was it put on? Because I've been looking at it. 
I've been looking for stuff, didn't, didn't see it. <laughs> Yesterday afternoon, it was posted. I didn't see it. Commissioner Mayhew, here. do you have anything to add? Um, well, no, it was late. Huh? Yeah, right. <clears throat> Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, we were to move the inmates all of them. Can we save enough and not touch the sheriff's office? Well, right now it doesn't really save us because you're losing so much revenue by doing this. You're losing the roughly 250000 from Oscoda County. You're going to lose your commissary and roughly the same amount okay. of money. So it's not it's not creating any any real room by doing that. Well, I figure, I figure it's on a population of 60 on average, not 50, but 60, $766,500 for the year cost. Take that away from 2.1. That's a little higher than commissary and out of county. Right, but you still have to subtract that revenue now. That revenue doesn't come in anymore. So yeah, it would look like if we just were able to cut the so expense. I'm, I'm saying the expense to do that is this. Right, but you still have expense for running a lockout. Okay. What if what if I offer them forty dollars and they haul them for us? Another hundred thousand. You still gotta have lockup. Okay. All right. We don't know how much that is yet. Well, I, I ran through the just to put the again the back of the napkin map, and I'm still coming up with it costing us actually about an additional fourteen thousand dollars to do that. So no matter what, we're going to tear into both well, apartments. I, I yeah, I, I think that's true. Uh, but again, my I'm hedging on the staff reductions. I probably have more staffing there under the lockup scenario than maybe they need, but I don't know that. And I'm not comfortable myself making a proposal that's lower than that without finding or having some expertise come through to tell me it's okay. Well, I'm just wondering if you, you lock up somebody over the weekend or two or three or whatever, and and then they're taken away. They're taken away on Monday. Well, why do I need somebody sitting there watching the empty cell? You probably don't. You probably then go to an on-call situation, but I, I'm not even sure how that would work. I, I don't know what the requirements would be from the state. I do know that we're going to, if somebody's arrested, we've got to have somebody there to watch them. Or, or they're transported straight to, to the other facility. Is there any any with this updated uh, draft version? Is there any groups um, that we are contributing to that is not mandatory? Any any at all? One that comes to mind. The only one that comes to mind immediately is EDC. Get to that being your likely your nine hundred one. That yeah. You know, what, what I'm seeing mostly in the uh, allocations are areas that we have to fund. So that's your, your uh, child care fund. That's, yep. that's your indigent area health department. Any areas that what we're that we do not have to fund? Is EDC on there? Um they're on here somewhere. Trying to look. Yeah, are, that's what, uh, 901, 158, that's 35,000. I, I I would have thought that, that would have been on before we start looking at reducing our own staff, our own people, that 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 should have been top priority. And don't get me wrong, I support the EDC, Mr. Wilson. Right. It shows but zero here in the special. That's what I'm asking. It's not a special fund. Our allocation actually comes out of the general fund under the appropriations okay. activity 901, and it is about the sixth line down. All right. 
What page, where are we at? So I know. The very last page of the general fund. It finds down. Okay, no. Okay, so that in six lines I don't want to use. Yeah, that's twenty five thousand. Is there any other? What about our Mac subscription? The line of the Mac. I have twenty five. How much does it cost? Us for yeah. Mac? About eight thousand. Yeah, that's about what it is. We dropped it one time. Oh, we can drop it again. Yeah. I would hesitate on that, particularly with the opioid conversations that we're having. There, our primary resource at this point. Uh, we did talk at uh, one of the last meetings about the use of opioid money to offset some of those administrative costs. I haven't had an opportunity to dive into that yet, but you know that maybe is a source that we could use to fund them. What do you mean? Well, we're using them right now. We're relying on them pretty heavily uh, to help Mac? guide us. Yes, they help guide us on the opioid settlement expenditures. And I'd hate to just lose that. But if we can use uh, at least some opioid funds, reflecting that that's what we're using them for is to come up with the plan that they've uh, asked us to do, uh, then that may be a permitted use. Where so the EDC is thirty five thousand. Where's the Mac? Where's where would I be looking for like stuff like this? Mac would be this, the board. Uh, pardon me. Board of commissioners activity. So that's uh, just a couple of pages in to general fund. We have ones called memberships and subscriptions for the board of commissioners. The line item is eleven thousand. So you've got a Mac um, membership and you do a new membership. Page. Here we at the beginning. I thought that the edge. Oh, I think down nine thousand seven fifty five. Yeah, that's what it was in 02. Seven ninety. Yeah. Are some of these that we have that we got to pay? Can we cut their pay, or we got to give them what we got to give them? What are you looking at? What do you What do you mean specifically? Well, you said a bunch of them. We have to pay them. We're talking about groups, correct? Do you mean the, right. the mandatory committees or groups that we? Yes, that's what he's. Yeah. That's what we're going over right now. But some of them that we have to pay. Is there an amount that's right that we could? Yes, I get what you're saying. We're going down. If we're not here, they get nothing. That's mandated. Are we giving the minimal necessary that is mandated to? In, in the cases of like the health department and uh, the indigenous uh, defense and so on, yes, it's the minimum we can get. So, some of this stuff is millage, millage. Uh, right. Serve, so senior citizen millage, that's a pass through. Right, we have no control over some of it, but but there's an excellent yeah. question. Are, are we giving more than we need yeah. to get? Right. Is there anything going on with the veterans that are 100% disability that we get reimbursed some out from the state or from the federal government or something on that? Veterans? That was on the phone. That was money. We don't get, we don't get the property taxes now. Right. It's because the tax of them did this. Are they going to subsidize that there's, with there's their funds? Conversation in Lansing about that, but so far their answer has been no. Uh, just had an update from Mac last Friday about that, and they were optimistic about some movement on that. But until it happens, you know, obviously we don't see it. Thank you, David. Can I speak? Um, I had asked uh, Tim if we could find out uh, a little bit in the district court where we were at, and I tend to. Daniel's here. Come on up. Yes, specifically, I don't know what I bring up and bring up this I am Dale Janice, court administrator for both Ogama and Ross Common Counties, as yeah, lately. Um, I don't know what you guys have, what you don't have. So forgive me if I'm giving you information that you've already gotten. 
um, I put together our caseload trends and all criminal cases originate in the district court. So that's also going to give you a picture of your entire county. It's not just the sheriff's department. So I just want to put that out there. Each one of these gives you anywhere from 2020 through projected 2023 of what our totals will be. So if you'd like to pass those around. Um, in addition to that, I put together exactly what the district court is statutorily responsible for. So while you look at those case numbers, this is also what we have to provide the constituents of Ogemaw County. So that can be passed around as well. I do know that in 2016, when positions were eliminated across the county, that it was probably heaven sent that our caseload did made a dive with the um, statutory amendments because I really don't know how that office would possibly be functioning today if they still had the case that they used to have. I think that if right now the liability is very high in the district court from what I have observed thus far, we have a Supreme Court auditor currently going through financial records that are very questionable, to be completely honest. Um, so, I mean, you have less and less staffing, <laughs> those things aren't going to be caught. Um, I just really want to, I can't stress that enough. I, I'm trying my hardest to fix the three bank accounts that the district court currently possesses. Um, and I can't imagine if there was less staffing there to aid in rectifying that and in actually making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So it creates a liability. We have to pay the state a large chunk on what we collect. We don't do that and it's not, uh, there's no oversight. Um, you have three years worth of it. That puts Ogemaw County in you know, a difficult position. Our caseload um, in correlation with the reduction of inmates as far as misdemeanor cases. In 2021, the state of Michigan um, created a jail task force, well, implemented the jail task force recommendation. And that was that the assumption is all misdemeanors will, unless, unless it's an assault of crime, be given fines and costs, no probation, no jail time. Doesn't make the caseload go down at all. It makes it more difficult for really us to um, collect one and to um, punish, I guess, right? Um, so now instead of for instance people fail to pay traffic tickets and their license would be suspended and that would provoke that individual to come in and pay off their traffic tickets so that they could get their license renewed the state took that away from the courts so the only remedy for um getting money and traffic citations is to issue a bench warrant for their arrest for speeding um i, I unfortunately because dispatch here enters their warrants. I, I don't have a total, but I can tell you that my bench warrant totals in Roscommon County have, um, I mean, quadrupled and therefore $100 speeding tickets. The county's not getting the money and the court staff is having to validate and make sure that they're good every single month. So, um, I mean, once again, liability. <laughs> you got warrants for the arrest. If you don't get the money, do you still owe the state? If we don't get the money, no, no, no. It, the state will only get their share once Correct. you get it. Correct. It has to be dispersed but, properly. Yes. That's good. <laughs> what what's current staffing there right now? They have, well, it's on your sheets there. One, two, three I'm deputy court clerks and three magistrates. And myself. Right. Does both counties. Questions. Uh, where yeah. do all these cases come from? As far as um, how do you how, how do you receive your cases? Well, it could either be from an arrest that happens, well, the criminal round, traffic round. There's also civil cases. That's anything from landlord tenants to small claims. But small where does it begin at? District court or on the side of a road when somebody's arrested and put it no, in. No, no, no. You're leaving out the prosecuting attorney. No, I'm not the prosecuting attorney, but they file tickets with the court. Yeah. Before the prosecutor may have raised your charges. And I understand, but 
All, all the criminal stuff and everything that comes from here goes to the prosecutor first. No, traffic division does not. Traffic division does not go through the prosecutor attorney's office at all, unless somebody contests the charge. And I believe here, the prosecutor does represent agencies that aren't just the sheriff's department. It's an agreement that they have. Um, but beyond that, the traffic division, no, no tickets go through the prosecutor's office. Criminal offenses all go through the prosecutor's office inevitably if charges are issued. We could have a ticket, somebody arrested, a ticket's filed, we set bond, we you know, begin our process, and the prosecutor may not be able to issue charges for five months waiting for labs to come back from the state of Michigan. I understand that. So have have those traffic violations increased? I would say, well, they've increased from last year. They've increased from 20. They took a large decrease. 2019 was the last time I see that the, the Ogemaw District Court had like 10,000. But I don't, that correlates to a car position. I, I don't know. I can't attest it, to the history of it. It looks but like it's it went down. Happened. I'm sorry. According to this, am I looking at the right line, the traffic misdemeanor? Well, we're going no, 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 no. She's talking about uh, civil infractions. That's what you're referring to. Talking about traffic. I'm well, talking I'm sorry. about traffic. I'm and talking I, about I, all the, all those tickets that used to be written out. Um, speeding. Yes. Is that what you're referring to? No, it's so those would be yeah. civil infractions. Okay, where would that be on here? That's the right below that, I believe. Right, it's the um, first page. I handed. Okay, that right. right here. But the all one so, bottom half. Yeah. Right here. Yes. So so we were high because there was a, a position. Somebody in the room that's aware of their whole, the sheriff's department. Didn't you guys have a, a car? Yes. That used to sit? Okay. We had so three, we had three cars out there. Thank you. Thank you. So they had an influx of of uh, civil infractions at that time that did decline, and honestly, this year it's back. It's picking back up. Went from forty four fifty five to sixteen fifty five to nineteen fifty nine. So there was a pretty big. Drop from 2020 so to 2020. It was such a, a large drop. Uh, I would assume there should have been a drop in an employee of some sort because now you're not well, handling nearly as much. Well, I'll ask you to keep flipping and you will see that there is an increase in drunk driving. There's an increase in drug cases. There is uh, an immense increase in the probation load. Now, who? how do you get that? Did I come up through the prosecutor's office? In drunk driving, yes, a drunk driving case would inevitably. So they're handling all these, all these that are coming to you, but yet they haven't had an increase in, in their people. And so they sent it all forward to you. They haven't had an increase in their personnel in their office. There hasn't been an increase in the district court either. Where were the drunk driving? Just so I know what I'm looking at. I know nothing about this. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But there was an increase. Drug case load. That is that drug case load trends. Drug and then below it is drunk driving. Yeah. Oh, fine. But there was an increase just before Judge Noble left. He put another magistrate up there. Why do you need three magistrates now versus the three you used to have? I I I can't attest well, to why. It, no, that wasn't an additional person. No, it wasn't it's an additional she, position. She would. Right? It was position. an additional person. Went right upstairs for the prosecutor's office. Yes, it was. No. No, no I don't Leanne think it was on the court recorder. And she was added as a magistrate. And then now we've gotten one reduction. Well, yeah, right? there's not a court. I, I am running You're the only court administrator, so there's even yes. one less. Yes, oh. yep. Mm -hmm. So who's the one less? Diane well, Rao. Diane Rao. Diane Rao. You've taken her place, right? Uh, yes, I've, I have taken on the responsibilities of two. <laughs> She was she was one county. She's being split. I understand. I already know that. Yeah. Well, then. Yeah. I, so we kind of got a half. That's why you're asking? Know. Her, but she's got two. I don't understand why we have to have two magistrates. I'm also a magistrate, and I can tell you that I've issued a handful of cases while I'm here trying to work out the administrative functions of the district court. So that's with having three magistrates. I'm also dual um, titled. As a magistrate, I've helped out in that sense too. So, I mean, the, the work is there, the need is there. That's up to the judge, though. The judge names those, and the judge is elected. We're not the judge's that. boss. It's the budget is ours. I get that too. But, you know, I mean, you want to tell the judge that 
when she comes back from vacation or whatever that I guess you can go ahead and tell the judge you disagree with her. Well, our, our job is a budget. I think these are very valid conversations. We 100%. Wanna, we're trying to figure out the exact functions of the district court. Oh, I get that. I get that. Any other questions? What was your question, Commissioner Simmons? <laughs> Long story short, what was your question? No, I just don't understand. I mean, the magistrate was up there and uh, all this. Has has dropped these civil infractions. I, I just don't understand. Well, I would also say that civil infractions are something that are automatically uploaded, for the most part, from an officer's car. So there isn't a lot of data entry with a traffic ticket. Um, after ten days, if an individual just doesn't respond to the court, a default judgment automatically goes through the system, and they owe fines and costs. That that workload is so minute of the civil infraction portion of the district court. Um, I'll do a little more research. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I ask you just one question with, with uh, this part? Um, video, the, the use of video. Um, uh, Zoom or yeah, right, Zoom Polycom. With, yeah, Polycom. Yeah, is our uh, what? What's our percentage? The, or is there a percentage? Or well, how often is it used? I mean, we we utilize it the most we possibly can to reduce, um, you know, in the criminal realm, transporting inmates. So right. as long as the person has at one point or another been in the Omaha County Jail to be fingerprinted we can facilitate the rest of that case if they're lodged in another jail uh -huh. via Zoom. And they, they do that to, to the best of um, their ability. What's What stops it from happening? Well, certain hearings um, are inappropriate to be broadcasted. Um, anytime that you have in the felony realm of preliminary examination, that's, that's really almost like a jury trial. You have witnesses, um, victims, that are testifying, it's inappropriate to to stream it, you know, online. Oh, um, okay. and, and so this is a well, it's public though in the courtroom too, right? It is if public. You it is public, but then you walk out. You know, you're not allowed to videotape anything right. that's happening in the courtroom. Okay. Um, you know, it's that the the worrisome of somebody replaying it or doing whatever. You know, there's got to be some privacy. No, yes. laws there somewhere. Some arraignments are done on. Yeah, okay. a lot of arraignments are. A lot of civil cases are handled via Zoom. I mean, really, it's it's being used more and more. The only downside of Zoom is the record. Um, it's not as easy for transcript purposes when you, you don't have the ability to pull mics out and people from talking over each other like you are in the courtroom. Right. Um, so those types of, of um, hearings are what, you know, delays the judge in wanting it to be via Zoom sometimes when she when she believes that it's going to be a can you know some okay. contentious. Okay. Okay. I'm just, I'm just but no, it's, it's, good. it's being used more and more though. Yes, it is. And actually um, say, the Supreme Court administrative office is pushing for it more and more. Are they? Yes. Would you, would you say 20% of the cases? Well, um I mean, honestly, I think that Ogemaw County does it more even than Ross County County, to be completely honest with you. So maybe 10, 15% of the cases, but okay. the more people get connected, it, it will be easier to do that as well. One issue that we are encountering is because so many counties are trying to utilize the same machine. You, you have a jail mm -hmm. that has a polycom system. Mm -hmm. Big counties, maybe a couple, but... Typically, Northern Michigan, Mid Michigan, you have one polycom system for every jail. Mm -hmm. Well, how many courts do you have that are conducting court at the same time? Right. That need to utilize it with another inmate. Right. That forces a lot of times us to have to do a writ and have that inmate brought there if we just can't make it work with schedules because that county doesn't have the availability. So now, if they put more of those systems in, right. it may be easier to do. Right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Sheriff, would you like to come out? Roll this stuff. Yeah, thank you for this information. And Mr. Howard, come on up.
I guess I'm going to ask your opinion of, of how you feel about these proposals. Well, it's a draft. Oh, politely. <laughs> it, it's a draft. Okay. Um, I'm not going to get real excited about it because it's only a draft. But if we do some hard moving around, you're talking eight total people out of the people's sheriff's department. It ain't my sheriff's department, it's the people's. You folks are going to have to answer to the people. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is you're going to reduce services. You are definitely going to reduce services. You take five, five inmates out of there. I'm sorry, you take five correctional officers out of there. We have to backfill transport. Um, you take three deputies off the road. We got the millage pass for four deputies to bring back night shift. You're going to take three away from that. I can't go without night shift, which means I have to move people from days up to nights. It's going to be a scheduling nightmare. Um, there's going to be overtime, unbelievable overtime. And I can't predict that right now because you got transport, you got to fill the shifts. Um, it's it's not a good move. It, it isn't because you're reducing services for the people that voted to to have good, solid law enforcement, good, solid. Uh, I guess I want an explanation just to verify. So we're going into talks of, of overtime. If the, there is no money, there's no money for overtime. How how does that work then? Is it is how, how does this work? Well, if there's no money for overtime, then the overtime cannot happen. Uh, and if it does happen, then we've got to be back here at the board to talk about what what the consequences for doing that. Uh, transport. I'm just doing the math uh, this morning. Matt, this budget proposes what is equivalent to you know a non-call employee, but working about 36 hours a week on transports. Um, I don't know how long it takes to transport from point A to point B, but that seems like that that's enough. Be wrong, but I, I don't think I am. Uh, just in terms of 35 hours a week, you think about that, that's a full time employee. Uh, and in this case, we're talking about on call people who are, you know, what, two, three hour commitments, whatever that you know, back and forth might be. So, I, you know, no, it's not going to be easy. Yes, there will be some, uh, you know, long hours spent working on scheduling and, and figuring out where best to place the resources. Uh, but, yeah, frankly, we just don't have the funding. Uh, again, I the last thing I want to do is cut anybody. I, I, I it's true with everybody. I think yeah. agree, but I, I guess we we've been going over this budget now what for three weeks, pretty close to it. It seems like I guess if, if looking at where we can cut any direction helps. Again, we just dropped thirty. Hopefully, we discussed cutting thirty five thousand dollars from the EDC. Wherever we can cut is greatly appreciated. I, Things looking at this food cost has has that been looked at looked at overtime? We talked about that last week. You know, I know we're approving washing cars now that inmates are on tethers. Can they do it? Like any line item that that you're able to look at, not that we want to, but we need to. I would rather do this than than eliminate jobs. I appreciate that. The other thing is is tickets, and and I know I I understand we had a lot of a, a lot of tickets in the past. With the previous sheriff, I, I know your thoughts and feelings on that, and I don't disrespect that, but if that's going to save some jobs that we're willing to put a vehicle on, on 75 three days a week, like something somewhere, so we don't have to cut jobs, it, it, what what can you guys come up with? Uh, is Has there been thoughts on that? Uh, these are just simple little line items. I understand that, but every penny right now counts. Well, the, the biggest issue with the tickets is that uh, you just heard that more than likely they're not going to pay their tickets. Their, their license will not be suspended. Uh, it's softer on crime now, you know, everywhere. The whole the whole country is softer on crime. Uh, sentencing diversions, there's just no more people going to jail. That's huge. That's that's a problem for us. Um, if, I take, if I take the car and put it out on I-75, that reduces the call time for a complaint. And then, and, and especially if you're gonna if you're gonna cut three deputies, and then I stick a car out there. Okay, that's four deputies. 
you might as well you might as well write that guy off on I seventy five because he's not going to be answering complaints. It's not, and and if we if we don't do a, a just service to be responsible for being there first, being there fast, people are going to wonder where our cars are at. I have a comment. Well, I think that there's a balance. I think that there's a balance. I mean, either either we're going to have a really tough choice of of eliminating some officers or taking one of these officers and sticking them on 75. And if there's a call, hopefully it's near. So, I mean, there, there's got to be a balance are you, here. Are you talking to stick one out there after all these cuts are made? No, I'm telling you, we don't have to, to make them. Trying not to cut. Like, give us something on your end so we don't have to do this. I, I don't, I don't think the numbers out there will <laughs> sustain what we're, what we're looking at for the cuts with tickets. Are you willing to give us anything is my question, I guess. I would have to sit down with my undersheriff and, okay. and go over some things and and and, and see what we actually can do. But I have a comment. Yep, I'm sorry. And I understand where you're coming from about the services and keep everybody safe. Where are we going to get the money to pay for that? Where are we going to get the money to pay for that? We have gone over this, gone over this, gone over this. There isn't any money. Well, Something's got to go. And be it you, be it up at the courts, be it. Us, be it whoever. Did we did we look at and I don't want to throw it out there, but you know what? I'm going to. Did we look at taking one person from every department rather than coming and gutting our department? Did we look at that? Did we look it's at it's already been that? done here? There's already been cuts done in this county building, in the county oh. building. There used to be six of the registers offices, three in there now. I, I, I agree with you. Also, is taking cuts, Sheriff. I, I agree. I, I agree with you. Like, have have we? And we're that hoping that so the fair. administrator has has did I, that in these department head meetings. Has went over all the staffing that knows that people are everybody's at their minimum capacity. I, I have, don't know that. I understand all that, but there's going to be huge. You cut you cut eight out of here. The repercussions of that in itself. What we have to do to back the backfill, the the void here is going to reduce services on the road our patrol time is going to reduce and if we if we want to get a millage passed next august it's going to be difficult and and, and we need to know that we need to be up front with that be, be be honest with ourselves if we do anything like this drastic like this our services is going to be depleted and we are we are in trouble and if we don't if we don't get that millage passed, and I think we were working, I, I think we were working towards getting it passed. I think the people were really on board with what we were doing there. If we reduce anything, the substantial, we're taking that chance. And 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 I'm here to tell you, you've seen what happened last last week. There's oh, there's plenty more of that coming. With my deputy get rammed, there is we've got a mental illness problem in the country. I don't I don't disagree with you, but but, but unfortunately, I no. that millage I think right now we need to focus on right now, at versus next August. I I right now we we need this in any way that we can balance this and then move forward with next year's planning and hopefully three years forward would be great. But right now it's it's this. I just, I just, I, I can't, I can't. And when I say I, I'm speaking for the people because I work for the people. What do you think we work for? We can't, we can't afford. Yeah, Answer my you're question. You're coming right after me. Uh, commissioners. You're coming after me and you're coming after the sheriff's office that, that provides good, solid. We went out and the commissioners went after other people beforehand. Commissioner. And didn't come after you. Commissioner Simmons. Like I said, this is a draft. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just telling you that if you reduce these services and it will, it will reduce it greatly. Agreed. I, we're, 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 we are in trouble with crime in this, in this community. Big time. I don't just, Commissioner Simmons, I don't disagree, but funding, we have to be able to support it. And again, looking at these numbers, I, I, I'm greatly disappointed in, in food costs and the medical, all these numbers that have went up were, was very shocking to me. Unfortunately, I, 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 I was shocked by these numbers. I was. Can I say something? Please. Um, 
So, Sheriff, I understand your frustrations. We're, we're all extremely frustrated, and these are the last things we want to do. But um, Commissioner David brings up a good point, and I know you said you're going to talk with the undersheriff, but, you know, I, and, and I, I disagree with you, the fact that, yes, yeah, some people are not paying their tickets, but there's still a lot of people that will pay their tickets. And if if we can find any way that we can take one of those light line items, for example, we take a, a deputy and have between the quarters of exit 202 to 215, you know, you're still there. They're obviously their main focus. If they get a call, it's not long for them to get to 33 to get onto the main drag here. So they can get there and still cover a decent area. You know, we're just looking at if if you could talk with the under sheriff and you know, there is a, a really good possibility to really create some good revenue there if we were consistent with a car. And this car is not just going to be there for right and speeding tickets. I mean, they can still cover a good section for calls. So I, I think that's what we're really trying to get at is if you could really dive into that and, and, and see that when we were when we're asking that without having to reduce staff, if we think we can really put a good plan in place to generate more money off of that. And I think with the way that we're set up there with that corridor and the main roads coming there, we still can cover a, a you know a good part of the county with that that officer. Well, my biggest my biggest concern with that is I lived it. I worked it. I was out there. Mm -hmm. Big calls come in, I'd shoot down a 202 and shoot up that way. I've done it. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But the biggest thing is, is that that car will be setting out on the slab. For 12 hours not being seen in these inner streets. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if 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 I'm gonna vote for a millage, if I see that car go by my house just cruising by, that's gonna alert me like, oh, patrol's out here. I'm gonna vote for it because I see it. They're they're at work. But if we don't have that car doing that. It's a chance we're taking. Well, I understand that, but also a chance we're taking is if if we can formulate a plan where we really think we could generate that money, we don't have to lay off the deputies. And I think if we educate the people, right, and, you know, we're, your social media has got a lot more consistent, we let the people know. The people that know are watching. The people that vote, the people that care, they're watching. They're paying attention. Absolutely. Well, why are we doing this? Well, we're putting this deputy out on 75 now, so we don't have to lay off jobs. Well, also to keep that area somewhat safe too. <laughs> I drive it. We drive fast, very fast, and that's not safe. <laughs> but I again just looking for some type of, of adjustments here. I, I think there's some more serious line items that can be looked at before well, we start before we start uh laying people off. I, I think everybody again needs to take a hard look. Um I just feel like people are are dragging their feet. Um I, I I don't, I don't. Uh... The, the biggest thing is uh, we're at full staff and, and we're moving forward. And then, and then when I get chopped off at the knees, when you're talking eight, that hurts, that hurts. And, and then, and then, you know, you, you're, you're talking, you're talking three depths. If one of them could go to the road and keep, keep this whole thing the way it's moving, we can look at that. But I don't, I'm not so sure that would happen uh, because the ticket that ticket revenue isn't isn't going to save us here by what I'm looking at. No, I agree. But uh, but but in numerous items, if we're at full staff for the first time in a very long time, cut your overtime in half. We we haven't adjusted that. We have. We cut. We didn't cut half. from last year to this year. It's the exact same. With You're the right. two lieutenants, which is a substantial amount, fifteen or twenty five thousand. Well, and the reason why they were high is because they were they were they were moved out of their desk to a training situation, training the new ones to come in so we could get full staff. That's why they that's why they accumulated so much overtime. They're back on their desk now. Agreed, but 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 again, we're at full staff, and we're just looking for little tweaks to show that we're we're, we're trying here. Take the overtime, cut it in half. Uh, look at all the departments. We're looking at any any savings will help overall, so we don't have to eliminate jobs. I don't think any of us here want to do that, um, but but we need some help, or that's what we're going to have to do. And again, that's the last thing I want to do. I'm going to make that very clear. Um, I don't want to close the jail. Um, I don't want to eliminate jobs, but but 
we, we need to look, please just, do some more digging of where we can save money. Just Everybody. A, just a rough figure. I mean, this was a very rough figure that uh, uh, Lieutenant Howard and I came up with. The, the lost revenue, if you close that jail down, just the lost revenue, and I'm and I'm thinking that's a little low, is $717,000, almost $718,000 of revenue. That opening, with that open, that's what's bringing in into that facility. I, I don't think that's the direction, maybe a misunderstanding, but I don't think that's the direction that's being talked no, about I, right now. No, I just wanted to get that out there. That's fair. Get that out there. That's fair. Um, uh, again, if... if if everybody, I need to look this over. I just got this today. Um, I'm definitely. And I just, I just got it today too. I just looked at it. Yeah. So that gives all of us very, very little time. Um, are we comfortable with all the departments, their staffing levels, Tim? I, I, I guess you know more about that than, than me. I know. I, I can I think say with certainty that the staffing that you see, particularly in your other elected offices, is already at the minimum uh, capacity. You know the test for this that was defined by the Supreme Court is the barely serviceable level, and, but yes. they never defined what that was. But these departments, uh, you've got one person in a department, that's a third of the staff, gone. in some cases half, uh, and they just can't afford to have that kind of a, a reduction in their resources and maintain their levels of service. So you know, in the short answer, my opinion is, yes, they're already at that minimum serviceable level. Is all, all departments currently at 30? Or 35 hours is that despite is everybody at 35 okay. exception of corrections and and uh road patrol where they're at always yeah that corrections you might well it's a funny thing with their swing switch shift and everything else but their 40s everyone else is 35. Mr. Mr. David um there were cuts before and uh the first floor at the county building took the cuts and they are at bare minimum right now just serviceable strength right now. If you take away any more, the service won't be there. I'll guarantee you that. I don't disagree. It does feel like these are the the, the two areas that we're targeting. It 100% feels that way. And, and I can't imagine how you feel. So, but before, I'm sorry, but before it was always the first floor at the county building. It always has been the first floor at the county building. They can't take any more cuts. Someone else is going to have to start and divvy up and take some part of these cuts. They can't be that first floor anymore. There's nothing left. Well, um, can we, do we have to, for, I don't know if you want to call it a hiring freeze, but I know it was discussed and then nothing became of it at last week's meeting um, for a hiring freeze or for any new hires uh, before a position is, is filled to come through the commissioners. If you'd like to do that, I'd like to put it right in the appropriation resolution. So it's right there for everybody to see. These are the rules of the budget. If you need to hire, you've got to come to the board. So we put it right in that resolution. So it makes it, you know, gives us the force of policy at that point. I think of where we're at right now. Would that include any of the positions that are already allocated to that? I think any position, any position. I've done it. At least then we're aware. It's brought to us. We We know more of what's going on. My comment is this, uh, in a lot of these offices, uh, we, a lot of us, don't even know what goes on in those offices and why they need the people they have. But the first floor has been cut considerably. Um, you may wanna go in there and talk to each one of those elected officials and find out exactly what their job is and what they're responsible for and what it takes to make that happen. And if they don't have those people, what's going to happen to that service that their office is giving? Well, because I know from being a commissioner before, they have been cut. And I don't know where else they can be cut. Agreed. These are not optional services. These are statutory. The clerk's office, the treasurer's office, these are statutory. They are by law. We must provide these services. It's no, it's no option. They can't just say, oh, I don't want to have a clerk's office. We can't do that. There go the elections. There go the elections. <laughs> oh. The elections, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, go ahead. I'm Can sorry. I say just to clarify a few things? Yep. There's a talk of the jail being 144-bed jail, which it is. Full operating capacity is 115. 
it's just if you go over that it's a fan it was much more time when things start to break down so full operation is actually a 115 bed that's in the policy over there that's from the state transport officers um equal about two full-time officers the part-timers that you're paying 16 dollars an hour they do about two full-time officers hours throughout the year i went through wow all the dailies there's not just the two guys i have Several because it's an on call thing. They get called at 11 o'clock at night. Got to run one to the yeah. hospital. I have to get somebody in. Otherwise, I have to pay a year. corrections officer overtime to come in and do it. So they equal about two full time hours with the staff for the part time transport. Um, we had when we had the staffing analysis. I believe after that analysis, they added the two officers from 10 to 10, which cover the short days throughout the week. Because otherwise, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're going to have eight hours of overtime you have to fill each day because each person has to leave. Otherwise, you're paying them an 84-hour schedule. If they don't get, if they do their their 712s, it's 84 hours. It'll be scheduled for 712s if you're at minimum staff. In 2009, when I worked in 26 to 30 bed jail right here at the sheriff's department, I worked with 22 officers that did full-time hours for a 28 to 30 bed place. Right now, today we have 78, and I have 23 employees over there. There's one extra employee for that jail. And I was working with right back here when I started in 2009. If you cut this, if you cut five officers out of there, I'm going to have overtime. I don't, I don't even want an overtime budget because they each get 256 hours a year vacation. Every time one of them takes a day off, they're just going to be rotating, taking days off. They'll have it off this week. This person will work every day. He'll have it off that week. That person will come over and work his day because there's nobody extra to work. Do you have any resolution? Any ideas for No, us? I'm just, uh, my resolution is the, the jail is bringing in money for what it can as a jail. Jails aren't made to make money. If I can find another county that would send us inmates, that would help. But as far as running the overtime budget, I don't think that's going to save you money either in the long run. What do you suggest? That's what I'm asking. Give us give I don't know. I idea. suggest that I'm running a... 115, 144 bed jail when we had a 30 bed jail with almost the exact same staff. But you want to take 28% of my housing staff that's going back there and taking care of them inmates away. So is there other costs that you're able to cut by really digging in deep? The, the biggest cost I can cut is by keeping the overtime down, which I think we've been doing. I'm finally fully staffed. So when somebody takes a day off, I don't fill it unless I have to. Unless it, I'll run a little short on days to not fill the overtime. So you went line item by line item through this, and there's no other place. I haven't went line item by line item, but I don't order a lot of that stuff, like the paper supplies. The food, I went through the food thing, because I did get a call from the undersheriff, and we had served more meals than the previous year. It's probably the same thing with medical. We probably had more inmates this year than we have last year. Are they possibly, and this is just a question that came to my mind when I saw those costs, because you had two... I'm going to say women because I, I know two of the names. I don't know if you had a, uh, cooks mm -hmm. that probably did a lot of home cooked meals. I, I'm thinking like cheaper meals, like goulash, um, like bigger things versus pre pre made. I, I think I think the meals. cooks now is Perry Ely is pretty much the head cook. He does a lot of the homemade stuff. That was my question. Are they homemade? homemade? Are they cheaper? Do, yeah, they're doing the homemade pizzas and yeah, he does a lot of homemade stuff. Yeah. Homemade pizza is not cheap. <laughs> well, kind of on the flour and stuff. He does the flour himself. I mean, he, I, makes, I, it for, he makes it from scratch. I don't know. Uh, Commissioner, well, let's see, did you have something? Yes, yeah, question on food. Yes, so, who does the exact food ordering then when it comes to working with the supplier? The cooks, and the cooks do. They do the they do the actual order. Keep track of their inventory and then do the. Order. So, who's double checking it? And because of this budget, like who's who's checking to see that they're checking for for cheaper locations? For ordering I for a month and a half. I know. I'm just. I'm <laughs> asking a question. Who does that? I don't know. I've been spending most of my time working with this, and you guys more than getting acquainted with everything at the jail at this point. That's fair. That's fair. Other questions? Thank you You're very much. Just, just came out here. My door is open. Any, any folks want to come see me? Please do. Please do. Thank you. I, I, I need to. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, under sheriff is on vacation. Right yeah, now? he'll be back next week. He'll be back Monday. Yeah. 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 And I, I have not called him and I, I refuse to nope. call him because nope. he needs a vacation. Yes. So yeah. He's been working very hard for us. So that's fair. We'll just, we'll just wing this until we'll get, through. Mm -hmm. okay. we'll get back into it. 
Right. Thank you. Monday with them. Thank you. Well, guys, I, I personally would like to resume. I, don't, I can't make a decision. I haven't had an opportunity to look this over. No. Um, I, our deadline is when exactly? The week from the September tomorrow. 30th. Well, the 30th, if you want to come in on a Saturday. I don't care. Whatever it takes. Commissioner yeah. David Estimate. Pardon me? Estimate. 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 Oh, go ahead. Um, so last week we pulled off for uh, MSU extension. We want, oh, yeah. We wanted to get some more information. Julie's here tonight. I don't know if we can. Can we discuss that? It's I don't think we can. Related. Well, you can do that. Uh, otherwise, we're meeting tomorrow, and it's on the agenda tomorrow. It's on the agenda tomorrow? Yeah. yeah but it's budget-related. Uh, yeah, that's that's the only rule. This is called for a budget meeting. That's what we told the people. Well, yeah, that, yeah, that's I guess, why that's why I brought it up because it's part of it. I guess before before we get there, an, another meeting because I again I don't think any decisions are going to be made tonight or tomorrow night. No. Can we look at a, a meeting time for next week? Yeah, I can do any evening. How about Monday, Monday the twenty fifth? Monday night. Monday night. Yeah, you said your your nights work for you. Yeah. Monday. Commissioner Simmons, she's looking at her journal. I have a mental health board meeting at five o'clock Monday. How long will that take? As long as I stay. How about if you How about if you dismiss yourself from that and come to this meeting? Is it Is it something you really need to be at? Because we need really need. Heck, the you result. missed the airport meeting today. Well, I had to. Hello. Okay. You can... and, I, and I'm sorry I didn't call, but can you can you miss the mental health meeting? What time are we gonna have our meeting? Five thirty. Thirty. I'll go for a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes, guys. Five thirty Monday. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Well, are you guys okay with that? Yes. Commissioner Wolfie, That's I good. guess if is there something else you wanted to discuss? Well, we have Julie here, and it's regarding budget. Okay. Julie, you want to come on up? Sure. I was planning to come tomorrow as well. So, like to you want to wait till tomorrow? You okay? We'd right. like to see you tomorrow too, though. That's right. All right. <laughs> and the next day. <laughs> you know. Right. I I did do some preparation today, so I'm. If we want to talk about it, I go ahead. I'm curious about what questions you have. I. Um, so, but well, my biggest question is what our expense, our taxpayers of Oklahoma County is paying for MSU extension. I understand they are paying Miller. rent here at the annex, but we also have costs that we're paying, correct? Yeah, the costs we're paying are um, you know attributed to what the clerical person does for our building inspections department and for planning and zoning. So she's receptionist, does some other odds and ends for them. And I think the grand total on that, I think between the two departments is $15,000, 5,000 of that's out of planning and zoning um, that's transferred over to the MSU extension fund. Um, it, we, obviously we have the contract and the millage coming in supporting MSU's costs. Right. Okay. From planning and zoning, not, not building. Uh, building and building. planning. Yeah, they, they both are. Yeah. Right. What was that, uh, Karen? The planning budget, which is part of your 101, is contributing 10000 and building and zoning, your other fund, the special fund, is contributing 5000 And then MSU is contributing 15000 Or how is this working? I guess I'm confused as well. Those funds are being transferred to MSU extension to support that clerical position. They're being they're being transferred into the fund. They don't go to the university. Right. Just to be clear about that. Right. And that individual is only getting fifteen thousand dollars. No, she's paid for um, uh, 0.95 of an of a full time equivalent. Is that correct? somewhere in that neighborhood? Yeah. That's point nine five coming out of the extension fund. Right. So the the millage fund that comes in fund two seven three is that right? Maybe. Okay. Um, that's the number that I keep looking at when I'm pulling okay. up the budget. Um, the projected revenue for 2024 uh, is equivalent to around $162,000. Um, the projected hey guys, expense. Hold on just a second. Brenda, Commissioner Simmons. Shut the door. Shut the door. I can't. Can you ask them to move? Sorry. The projected no, sorry. expense when I worked on the budget was around 161. And there's some change with that as well. Um, so 
I, I know I completed the budget worksheet, but I can't find it in my email. But when I did look at the reported special fund, it's in the special fund budget that was attached to the, um, to the, um, to your packet today, if that is helpful. 273. Yeah. 273. Yes. I, I was misinformed as to be a blunder on my part. I thought we were paying for a, a full-time employee wages benefits. Is that the county was? Correct. The the millage fund pays for at least 50% right. or 0.5 right. of a full-time okay. equivalent point for five. Colleen. Yes. Okay. yes. That's, we that's pay 0.95 of, no. of the... She is, she is employed for 0.95 of which <clears throat> the millage fund for extension pays for 0.5 of that. So... Right. A little more than half because she's not 100%. Yep. 0. 0.90 the county pays for. No, 0. 0.49. 0. 0.9. 0. 0.90. 0. 0.90. Oh, oh, oh. It's all the same. 0. They're paying 0. 0.4. No, am I? 0. 0.45. Yes. 0. 0.45. I said 0. 0.49. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. 0. 0.45. Half. That's half of point. Roughly under half. Than half. Roughly yeah. half. Okay. Under, under, under half. Right. I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with what's being done. Would you pay that? I'm fine with that. Would I pay the other 0.45? Yeah. If it was coming in through the millage fund, yes, we would pay. We would we would have her full time just working for extension. Yes. She also does do tasks for the building department and for planning and zoning. Um, and she can take on more tasks if if those are designated specifically to her. She sure. helps people that come in to help, find the right. To help, I, my, I'm just asking to help our budget. If we didn't have to pay 0. 0.45, if yeah, I don't, I don't pay. have another, I don't have another fifteen thousand coming in through a special fund that I can allocate. You don't have that coming through the millage. You don't have enough in the millage. I don't have no, no, I don't, no, I don't. But I mean, that's not the the building and zoning have the funds to support that, and especially building and building does. So is is planning and zoning a a, a general fund? Yes, no, it's, it is. It's really a general fund transfer, but it's put in the planning uh, activity, so you can see it. That's why we're we're doing. So it. if we took it out of planning, put it into building, because that's a special, it's a special, mm -hmm. right? And I can relieve I can relieve the general. If, yes, the short answer is yes. You and, that, and that money's there, so why don't we do that? You can do. That. I mean, when we, they're the ones this, you're doing the work for them. Sure. The uh, the philosophy between uh, splitting it somewhat between planning and zoning and building was that they were both utilizing it, so they both should be chipping in. That was the only philosophy that. Well, we they're it. both going to use it, and one can chip in. They should pay for it. <laughs> it's okay. Their revenues yeah. definitely exceed their expenditures. They have a fund balance. Am I wrong there? And it's it's justified. I mean, it's it's what's great about it is you're not. Yeah, yeah. Doing a shell game here. It's it's true. Oh, right, right, right. So it's kind of an easy adjustment that should have been made. Easy adjustment. Just pay ten grand. Well, that's what I. Ten grand. That feels good. But right, but that's my question: is why hasn't that been done? Like we're to this point, why hasn't this little stuff been done? It's getting done right now, and I know. But it wouldn't have. Well, if you, if you wouldn't have sparked the question. It, you were wrong on, <laughs> but, but yeah, right. But yeah, right. I mean, $35,000 over the EDC. I mean, if we're looking at eliminating jobs and cutting back, like why has this not been done? I, I, well, then what do you want to cut out of your page? What page? I, I haven't had an opportunity to look at these page. Well, it's your regular budget page. I mean, board of commissioners, 101, 101. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. What do you want to cut? I said, let's look at it, sir. Okay. What page are you on? Sorry, I repeat. Sorry. No, it'd be the second okay. page. I'll page. come tomorrow night, too. Yeah, thank okay. you. All right, no That problem. was uh, very helpful. Thank you, Julie. You're on what page? First let's page. Look at the page. Commissioners. No, second page. That's funny. Yeah. County commissioners. We just talked about eleven thousand dollars for Mac, which I, I 
um, training. I, I don't think we need any training, do you guys? But if there's, that won't be this year. We're all here till next they January. We already know everything we got to know. Unless we could. Training for it. You guys, is there any training you foresee, Tim? There's training all the time that goes on. Yeah, it's just a matter of what. For commissioners, have, have is there been any training in the past since? Yeah, for health the, insurance. Hold on, Commissioner Simmons. Since uh, since the new commissioners are on board and will be on board till next year, there's no new new training for new commissioners, correct? Not the new commission training, but like Mac does uh, well, two conferences a year that are training. So, is is there anybody that's any commissioners that's went to that in the past? There's one coming up right now. I had interest, but not because of costs and stuff like that. So no. So are you guys comfortable eliminating five hundred dollars? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. Uh, I'll cut the per diems. Per diems. That's five grand. What are you looking at? Super oh, fourth fourth line down. Supervisor per diem. Yeah, there's been a lot of discussion on those. Well, those departments I, I, that pay, I, I, this would not be, this would not affect the, uh, a committee that okay. pays somebody already, but this would be out of the general fund. I did uh, turn one in, and I think out of that, I got two for my first one ever in my third term, and I think I got two, two meetings were reimbursed. So yeah, I don't have a problem cutting that $5,000. Due to financial woes, I haven't turned in any and didn't plan on it. Is anybody else turning in any per diems? I haven't turned any in. I planned on it, but I guess I won't. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to make or break me, believe me. <laughs> You're probably not turning in any per diems, are you? No, so there you go. There's $5,000. Okay, there you go. I can't say that we Anything didn't. else, Commissioner Scott? No, that's fine with me. Uh, office supplies. What what are office supplies for commissioners? I've never turned anything in. I, nobody ever gave me an ink pen. Huh? I don't know. Oh, you take that out of ours? No, I don't do anything. I'm saying these. I go to other papers. offices and grab an ink pen. <laughs> yeah, all this paper. I guess what's the three hundred dollars? Can let's somebody charge, let's charge the building department? It's it's so, it's so, here adds up quick. <laughs> well, that's what I just. That's what I said. Is, is it that. come out of here? Does it come out of our budget? I can't tell you exactly what it is, but you've only been seventy-eight dollars for the whole year, so it's whatever it is. It's not huge. We could reduce it. So where would this come out of for for paper? That's all that we get from actual. Uh, one of the county general expenses covers like the paper. So I don't see what the three hundred bucks would come out of. Well, you can cut it. Just take take the three hundred and cut it in half. Hundred and fifty. Why not eliminate it when we don't even know what it's being well, utilized for? Seventy-eight this year. There's for what? We can look that. I don't know. I'm okay. sorry. I don't have that answer for you. Isaac got it. We'll figure it out. Jesus. What's the other uh, advertise what training we got rid of? Advertising expense. That's like your legal notices. So What's we need that. Notice? We have yeah. hearings. We have. Okay. And then Mac, I guess, are we leaving that $11,000? I, I, I think that is the only direction right now we really have with the opiate. Uh, funding it. I can't imagine paying legal. Uh, we need serious direction on that. Well, I like what Tim said. I mean, I think we've discussed this. I mean, we're spending time and energy. Tim is spending time and energy. Uh, we now no longer have Kelly. So Tim is going to have to be more involved or somebody to help, you know, get that set up. So we should get compensated for that. Some Somewhere. So I think that line item should be, should come out of opioid funding. The eleven thousand for Mac. That's or, what I or, think. Or you leave it here, and then we transfer out of opioid into the general fund to offset that. We could do I, that. I'd like to see it here because that's that's where I'd expect to okay. look for it. Okay. Don't we ever need it? Uh... See, I think it would be in the opioid just because that's that's uh, Amy. Isn't that her name, Amy? Amy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, she's been in with our first. She has been. Great. There's our there's our page. Anything else there, guys? What was your question on insurance, Commissioner Simmons? Health insurance? There's some health insurance in there. I didn't know where that. It's zero. It's zero now, but it wasn't let. So you, your term started in January, but the fiscal year started in October. And we had a commissioner that was actually paying in for dental and vision. So we have to show the expense 
we do here. The revenue came in and paid it. And I don't know if that came right out of his. Uh, oh, I know John. Okay. What it was. Nobody's taking any of it now, but. Okay. I guess I don't have them. I personally would like to take a look, a look at this and meet again on Monday. If anybody has any other ideas, can come up with any statements anywhere, please. Even if it's even if it's us washing our own cars, anything, anything, anything will help. I don't wash my own car. <laughs> anything else on the budget, guys? Before we go to public comment. No, oh, I'm good. Public comment in the room. Public comment on the phone. Uh, this is Jeff Nichols from the Veterans Office. Earlier, Again. did you have a question for the Veterans Office? I thought you had mentioned us. Uh, Brenda? Oh, is that that I'm aware of. Take that question you know, about right Memorial Day or something. Say what? You want to know about Memorial Day or? But no, it was, it was a question no. about a millage, but no, I think we got to clarify, Jeff. Thanks. She doesn't have any further questions on that. Okay. I just wanted to check because I couldn't hear very well on my phone. Nope. Thank you very much. Any public comment on the phone? Hi, Paul. I hope you're having a good a good uh, vacation. And you should not be listening to this meeting. You should be on vacation. <laughs> We're meeting again Monday, 530. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Yeah. Accept. Adjourn. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, we'll see each other all tomorrow. Huh? I tried to look at the 70 hour office. I was worried about it. It's not my budget.